we are the Tribulation Saints. Okay, I want us to learn these timelines. As you can see, Christ is over here, and everything before the cross is the law and the Old Testament. This is since Christ died into dispensations that are going to unfold here. Now, I want you to understand which these are, which all four of these different times are, and where the rapture, resurrection event takes place. The end of the church, the end of grace. So, if this is the millennium, and this is the church age right here, sometime, something happens between the church age and the millennial kingdom. This is the thousand year period of Christ ruling and reigning. And this is what we're in now. At some point, there's going to come a transition period where there's a resurrection rapture, where there's a wrath of God, where there's the tribulation, the seals are going to get opened up, and all the wars and pests that's going to intensify, the water's going to be turned to blood, and all that stuff's taking place. And I want you to ask yourself, where is the rapture? Where is the resurrection of the church? Now we know the Bible tells us that there is a tribulation and a wrath. And many people get that mixed up, clump them all together, and say that the tribulation is the wrath. Completely not true. There is a wrath period, and there is a tribulation period. And the resurrection takes place after the tribulation. Jesus told us that, Matthew 24, 29. After the tribulation, I'll gather you into the clouds. So the church age is going to go on until actually after this tribulation. Here's the tribulation period. And technically, if you really want to get technical about it, the church age would go on a little bit like this. Until the end of the tribulation. From here to here. Now this is when we see the seventh trumpet coming. The seventh trumpet right here the seventh trumpet takes place, and we have the resurrection rapture event right here. Right here at the seventh trumpet, at the end of the church age. At the end of the church age, we get the seventh trumpet. Right? Seventh trumpet. Now, we know that because Paul said, after the last trumpet, Seventh trumpet, Paul says at the last trumpet, we'll have the resurrection rapture. The dead are going to be raised first, right? And then the living who are left over alive shall be caught up together. This is the rapture is at the resurrection. You can't have a rapture without the resurrection. Everybody that's died throughout all these years, okay? Everybody that's died here, died. Everybody that's died. Now there's going to be a lot of people dying here. The two witnesses have to die here. Two witnesses have to die here. There can't be a resurrection rapture until the two witnesses are dead and raised again, Revelation chapter 11. Okay, so... When the seventh trumpet blows, the resurrection rapture takes place, and then the Bible says, after we're in heaven being judged, the Bible says, the angels are pouring out the wrath of God. This is 75 days. Now, how do we know that 75 days? Because the great tribulation period is 1260 days. And the book of Daniel tells us there's something about a 1,335 day period that blessed is he who makes it past that. Because the, there's going to be nations that come back. There's going to be nations that come back on the earth that made it through that period, believe it or not. Now, 1,260 days is this period right here. 
called the Great, Tribula Great Tribulation. Great Tribulation. So there's an extra 75 days left over. If Daniel says, blessed is he who makes it past 1335, well, that's 75 days longer than three and a half year period. And that means, to, to me, that means the wrath is 75 days long. And it makes perfect sense because when we get resurrected raptured, the Bible says we're going to be in heaven at a wedding feast and being judged. And then we come back down. Here we have Christ coming back to set up a kingdom. Also known as Armageddon. This is the war between God and man. This is the sixth, the sixth vial of wrath is poured out at Armageddon when Christ comes down to make war with the people left behind. The seventh vial basically is just finishing up. It's just saying thunders and lightnings. It happens real quickly after the sixth vial of wrath. The sixth vial of wrath is basically the end here. The seventh vial at the end is basically just announcing it is finished. Just like over here, during the tribulation period, the sixth, the sixth trumpet is the big trouble. That's the big war. The seventh trumpet is just an announcement, hey, that it, it's over. Transition of the kingdoms are going to take place. Okay? So anyway, I want you to understand that, 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 and that. Let's take another look at this. I want you to see this right here. Church age, tribulation, wrath, millennial kingdom. So what we have here is the resurrection rapture right after the tribulation. And then we come right back down with Christ after the wedding and the supper, marriage lamb, supper. We come right back down. So it's 75 days right here. And then Christ sets up a new kingdom. I hope that makes sense. Because we're going to go over this again and again and again. Hopefully you'll understand what that means. So, that's the way it is. This is the way it is. A lot of people will tell you, a lot of people will tell you that church age, tribulation, millennial kingdom. That's not true. They're, they don't separate. You have to separate the, the wrath. They'll tell you, this is the tribulation, right? Millennial kingdom. Tribulation. They'll tell you that this is the rapture, and this is Christ coming back down. So this is three and a half years. Well, what about the extra 75 days that Daniel talks about? We've got to use the whole Bible to understand this. And we also know that tribulation is a completely different word than wrath. Orge and thalipsos are two different words. Jesus talked about you will go through tribulation, and we have for 2,000 years and all around the world now. Christians are getting burned at the stake. And you will be put to death. And they will be put to death, including the two witnesses, right? And Paul says, after the dead are dead, they raise first, then those that are living will be caught up, right? But it's going to be after the tribulation. And so what they do is they just stick this all together. They stick the wrath and the tribulation all together, and they don't know how to rightly divide the difference between those two things. So again, if we go back here, we see right here clearly that we have understood that the tribulation at Jesus said Matthew 24 29 24 29 you will go through tribulation and after that I will gather you into the clouds that's what he says I'll gather you into the clouds right here at the resurrection rapture this is the resurrection rapture then the bible says we're judged and we go to the wedding supper and then he comes down at armageddon 
after the seventh trumpet, I'm sorry, after the seventh vial of wrath is done. This is the fall of Babylon. This is the great war that takes place with Christ coming back down in Armageddon. And we're not going to be here. We're going to be up here. We're going to be up here during that time of wrath. Revelation 16, 17, and 18. You don't see anything about the saints being mentioned. In chapters 11, chapters 12, chapters 13, you, you see the elect, you see the saints, you see God's loved ones still on the earth. Chapter 16, 17, and 18, there's no one left on the earth during the time the vials are being poured out. That's the way it is. So I hope this helps. We're about to see the great tribulation period. We're not there yet. We're almost there. The beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows is picking up. And we're getting ready to springboard right into this Mark of the Beast period. It's coming. So I hope you guys are ready. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.